So good morning or good night, depending on where you are in the world. And welcome to another interview of The Shield Dude on a Couch. I'm your host, Hector. And today we're joined by Hamish Glencross, and he's the guitar player and lead singer for the band Gov Rim. And I'm trying to pronounce it correctly because it's a, it's it's a kind of difficult to pronounce. And we're here because they are putting out an album on August the 18th, and we're here to talk about it. So, uh, Hamish, how are you today? Oh, fantastic. Uh, thank you for having me, Hector, and uh, I greatly appreciate the opportunity to talk about the, the, the band and the new album. So thank you, sir. No, you're, I, I, you're welcome. I listened to the album already because they gave me the promotion and you the band says that it's like a, kind of like doom metal but uh the vocals for me uh your vocals and also Catherine the keyboard player's vocals uh you guys sing it's you know like doom sometimes it's like very low but no you you got a a high register and a nice combination uh from the both of you so i, I was pleasantly surprised with the vocals because sometimes doom uh, it's more like low. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, it absolutely can be. It's, uh, you know, doom as a kind of term and genre can be quite expansive in that on one hand it can be, you know, very much clean vocals and, uh, you know, very, you know, kind of low riff-driven guitar-based music. Uh, it can also be, you know, very, you know, low-based vocals, very death guttural kind of things so um uh it's it's funny how over the years heavy metal itself has you know splintered into so many different kind of subgenres and those subgenres themselves then have multiple <laughs> subgenres as well so sometimes there are too many yeah sometimes so so many so you know genres are good and useful as like a starting point um for people uh, to to get a bit of an idea of what we're doing, and so you know, doom as a style of music is you know something I've been you know uh, loving and enjoying playing in for you know, got you know over two decades now, and um, you know, but of course you know we've got many an influence that we incorporate into what we do, and um, and so now I, I think we've got a nice combination of. Uh, you know, the heavy sludgy riffs and, uh, you know, the vocals. Yeah, they, you know, they're a bit diverse. There's quite a bit of harmony, a bit of melody in there as well. And um, I think uh, the, the key thing is uh, that, you know, it's all underpinned by this, 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 you know, heavy detuned guitar riffs that's quite melancholic and, you um, you know, it, it's not it's not fast. It's not thrashy. We bring the pace up every now and again. So, Doom works well as an introduction, and then we take. Yeah, it no, it, it's it's not <laughs> it's not super fast, but also uh, it's not super slow because some there's some Doom that are super slow. There's some prog prog elements to it in some of the songs because uh, a lot of the song there's a few like eleven minute and twelve minute songs on this album, and it's only like I think seven tracks if I'm not mistaken. So. Uh, there's a few longer tracks and uh, yeah, I like the variations in tone. So uh, this album, uh, how did you approach this one differently from your previous one? So this one started off differently because uh, very much of circumstance, really, whereas uh, the last album was the sound of, you know, the, the core of the band in a rehearsal room, jamming out riffs and ideas and creating the songs very organically together. This time around, you know, because uh, of circumstance uh, as it was, we then had to kind of work quite independently. So that meant the genesis of a lot of these songs started off with me at home on my own recording, uh, demoing ideas, and uh, then emailing through to the rest of the band for them to then you know see if they like them and uh, then build upon that foundation and um, because of that there was a lot of time an opportunity for me to be able to build upon the ideas add a lot more harmony a lot more um, you know well, melody uh, even really as well be able to have the time to be able to develop the 
the confidence in the song as well to turn it into something slightly different than what we might have done before. So, um, so really, the, the the period of being able to write the songs and then have uh, the chance to then reflect upon them, develop them as as need be, uh, meant the songs went through a, a real period of development before we were getting close to being able to go into the studio because we we knew it was going to be a delay before we could actually be in the same room and and recording. So. That gave us a chance to go over everything that we had, and some songs were, you know, rewritten a few times over, and um, and we we had the opportunity to, you know, say okay, okay, we've well, you know, got maybe one vocal track on one song. Would it work better maybe if Catherine was singing, perhaps, and then we could try that out. And uh, by the time we came around to actually go into the studio, we had a very definite plan for these songs that had existed for a while and had had the chance to grow and develop and really establish themselves as what we wanted to do with them in the past we'd maybe been a bit uh you know guilty of being you know kind of excited in the moment of having written something want to get in and record it and get it out straight away and a couple of things in the past that maybe do slightly differently now but it was a time capsule of what happened at that point. What we're doing right now is uh, is a lot more developed. Uh, the evolution of the band, I, I think, is uh, you know quite obvious for, for for people if they listen uh, to to the album, compare it to what we've done beforehand. So I'm very excited about what we've done and what we can look to do in the future. Yeah, and, and I think it's good that you can have. Catherine to help on vocals as well, because you have that, not all bands can have two people that can sing. And that way, when you're playing and you, and you want to rest, <laughs> she can sing her part and you can rest your voice as well. Plus it gives well, that, you a different dynamic. Oh, absolutely. And that helped so much for me. Um, Cause I, you know, I've been playing in bands for almost 30 years now and uh, was never really ever, you know, the vocalist in a band. I sure I did, um, some backing vocals in My Dying Bride and I do some things um, for, you know, a, a bit of fun outside of uh, uh, outside of the, you know, the, the proper band situation for a bit of fun. But I was never fronting a band. And uh, so, you know, this is still fairly new to me with this band. Um, but by bringing Catherine in, it meant that, yeah, the focus wasn't on me all the time. It meant that uh, I, you know, I could feel a bit more relaxed that someone else would also be singing as well. But what she was doing is 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 you know so beautiful. It um, kind of inspired me to try harder and um, and then you know then get a, gain a bit more confidence in in the cleaner vocals as well. So hence why I could try and do you know a vocal take like what I've done on on some songs on the album, which are a lot cleaner. Where in the past the temptation probably would have been just to go for a much rougher kind of sound, really. I mean, on uh, on the Reflections album, there's a, a song like The Light of You, where I'd originally recorded the vocal tracks quite clean, but didn't quite have the confidence to go through with it. So I said to uh, Nathan, the producer at the time of recording, we'd, we'd done the tracks and it was okay. I said, can I have another go? But I want to do a Tom Waits impression, really. <laughs> <laughs> and and then that became, the, you know, the, the take that we used because it was like, okay, yeah, yeah, more comfortable in a more growled, deeper kind of style. But this time around, because her vocals were as, you know, beautiful, uh, beautifully executed as they were, I wanted to try and, push that a little further and then get a bit more confidence in doing so. Plus it gives more layers to the band's music. And I'm sure uh, it's it, it has to be a little bit uh, intimidating uh, going through doing backing vocals to being the front man of a group. Uh, you're obviously afraid of getting lead singer syndrome, uh, <laughs> which is something that Axel Rose has. <laughs> where you think the world revolves around you <laughs> and not the other way around. 
it's it's an interesting uh, a phenomenon the the whole you know lead singer <laughs> thing. I mean, I've I've been lucky that um, you know, in you know the previous bands, the uh, singers have always or the vocalists have have, have always worked with have uh, you know been 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 fantastic. I mean, uh, I don't know if you've had the opportunity to speak to uh, Aaron from My Dying Bride at any point, but he's just like one of the nicest most you know humble guys you could ever hope to meet so you know he's uh he, he's a wonderful example of someone who you know can put himself at the the front of a band and be very vulnerable and exposed but incredibly can kind of take it in his stride and and, and work with it so uh you know he's, he's a great inspiration as to how to approach being the vocalist in a band so i'm lucky that i had a good inspiration that way but um like a blueprint yeah, for you yeah like he was like uh, a blueprint of what you wanted to be as a lead singer well certainly you know in, in a great degree of like you know attitude and, and approach is you know fantastic and uh and that's why then it was so amazing to actually then you know have him come and do a guest appearance on the album as well on the song "Follow Me," which was uh, which is great. And, that's one of the um, longer songs, yeah. That, that's like oh, a it is. epic song. <laughs> oh, it's a it's a, it's a long one that one. And when uh, we we're originally demoing that song, it had come to that particular section where he's doing the vocals on it, and uh, I'd done a demo vocal of how I kind of thought I wanted it to be. And just thought, you know, this it, it, it's, it just needs Aaron to come in and just do it right. And um, so, uh, you know, he uh, came, he was very happy to do it and uh, listened to it as it had been recorded. And he initially thought, well, it sounds good how it, how it is. What, what do you want me for? But as soon as he <laughs> stepped up to the microphone, did his bit, it was like, yeah, that's that's the Aaron magic there. So it, it was just wonderful having him uh, part of that. So at times when I read stories and things about uh, vocalists, you know, distancing themselves from bands at times, uh, I I I I never want to you know, kind of relate to that. I mean, you know, every band is it's a it's a full unit. You know, we're, we're doing things because everyone is you know behind division and, and into doing it so um yeah um myself as the, the singer in the band yeah uh i um yeah I'm, I'm more interested in you know the song as a whole and um and, and what we present i mean of course it's slightly different as well given that you know i'm also writing most of the music as well so so it's yes, a uh, huge a, undertaking it's it's a bit of a singular vision in in some ways but uh, you know i would never want to take away from the contribution of of everyone that's in, involved as well so uh, so no 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 lead singer disease here definitely <laughs> syndrome yeah <laughs> so lyrically this album uh what topics did you want it to you know to to tackle on this album so there's a bit of a recurring theme of um, kind of, you know, scars from the past and, uh, you know, living through the kind of trials, and tribulations that we may see and, uh, you know, come across at times. So um, some songs may be um, kind of focus a bit more on the loss, uh, like kind of echoes and pictures remain. Um, other songs a bit more like uh, As Titans, which is very much acknowledging a life of surviving through these things. And, and That's wanting. a great album opener, by the way, because Thank As you. Titans opens the album yeah. and it opens up pretty epically, epically like any Doom album should do. Uh, and you mentioned Echoes. That one, I thought it was interesting because like it, the singing doesn't start like a like at the free or like it, it's it's a long intro musically and I thought at first I thought it was gonna be an, like a instrumental track but then the singing came in and I think on echoes if I'm not mistaken there's a part where you and Catherine share like a little bit of dual vocals a little bit in the song yeah just 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 a little bit of a dual um, harmony 
when uh, by the time the second chorus, if you will, comes round. And, uh, and the idea for that additional harmony came from our bass player, Bob, who was certainly not going to sing it, but was then saying, OK, we really need a bit of a lift at this point. And uh, so suggested the the lines for Catherine's coming over the top of and uh, and I absolutely shone for it. So I'm so glad. So again, you know, such you know, a, a collaborative kind of piece for a song that started very much as me wanting to write a song very much as tribute to um, you know uh, uh, my dear friend who unfortunately died a, a, a couple of years back. And so the majority of the lyrics for that particular song um, I just came straight from the eulogy for my friend Martin Hall. And um, you know, I'd been stood in uh, you know, the Chapel of Rest and said what is essentially most of the lyrics and uh, to that song. And so that song wanted to build on a, a you know melancholic, melodic kind of foundation, but it drops down into then the, the heavier riffing and then it's really quite, you know, personal, uh, you know, goodbye to uh, you know, someone who is a, a you know, very dear friend of the whole band as well. So um, so then everyone knew, knew it was a, you know, an important song and uh, wanted to you know, contribute towards it. And uh, so Bob suggesting bringing that extra vocal was absolutely right. And Catherine sang it you know, beautifully, you know, more so than me. So uh, it really adds an extra shine to it. Yeah, it, it's, it sounds like it's, a, it's obviously a very personal uh, song. You're putting yourself out there. And, and when you were doing Echoes, did you knew that you wanted to use part of the eulogy in the lyrics or or you, you just said this needs to be in this in the song? So the song musically came first and was very much influenced by wanting to kind of pay some, you know, a, a bit of tribute to him that way. And when it came to the lyrics and just trying to think about what do I want to say on this, I, I just thought, okay, I looked over the, the, the speech that I did and just saw that me having just sat down and written down you know, what I wanted to say came out as almost lyrics itself, really. So it was quite a, um, quite a natural progression. And then to then singing over the top, the lines seemed to come quite naturally. And, um, and that's, uh, you know, a rare instance of a song that, you know, it's kind of start to finish barring a few changes and contributions was, written very quickly unlike some songs on the album where went back and you know redid things a, a few times over tried different things that song didn't change very much and um, and so even some of the keyboard lines were just as they were recorded on the demo just played without a kind of you know form or structure it was just played as the song played out and then it was just like okay that's that's cool so then you know Catherine's had to go back since and then learn what was played at the, at the time of recording because it just seemed to go down right so that song yeah was 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 pretty much as as, as it was from from when it first started unlike um, you know the song follow me which went through a lot of change, a lot of uh, development and restructuring and moving around in, until it became what it eventually was. And I know Echoes is one of the singles that you released. The other one that I saw the music video was for the song Devils, mm. which I, it's, a, it's a more, it's one of the faster tracks on the album. Uh, some great guitar on it. Uh, what is Devils about? So Devils is... Uh, going back more to the other theme of you know kind of surviving and, and and living through um you know trials and tribulations as as they come and at times being subject to you know the devils that you know maybe 
you know, environmental and around us and trying to, you know, negatively impact your life. Uh, also then the devils that can be within as well. Um, you know, the, uh, you know, the, sometimes the, you know, the more damaging kind of, um, you know, desires or aspects that you, you, know, you may want to do, you know, um, as in, you know, maybe, you know, staying out too late, partying too hard, or, you know, not appreciating uh, the moment you're in at the moment, not appreciating what you've got at the time until it's it's gone. So, um, so metaphorical devils as well. Uh, the two singles were chosen very much because um, Echoes at first, um, because that was such a departure from the previous album in that it's uh, you know, a lot more melodic. It really showcased that, you know, that things are, you know, evolved and slightly different this time around. We've got that. But then that's got to be countered with uh, the song Devils, which is much more head down hair and tattoos and just you know thrashing it out yeah, in the live room exactly to showcase that uh yeah there is depth and diversity in this album you know this is this by no means a uh, you know one tone album yeah that's what i wanted to say because usually doom metal can be very same sounding sometimes so you you experiment a little bit and i like the metaphors that you're using devils like no one's ever satisfied with their life and i think it's so true like like uh, sometimes you think like oh some you have something but you don't have something so uh basically we're always bitching and complaining <laughs> oh completely and far too often looking to the future to uh think that you know i need this i want this oh won't things be great once this come you know what once something happens and and before you know it years kind of passed and you know then looking back to think that oh actually i could maybe have just stopped and um you know enjoyed a bit more of where i was at at this kind of point in yeah. time it's you know sometimes it's, you know some of these kind of metaphorical devils and are not necessarily exclusively negative i mean there's um you know there's something to be said for a desire to want to move forward and achieve and what you want to do, but there's got to be the balance. You know, you need to find the yeah. balance of appreciating, you know, where I've been, where we're at, and where we're going in the future. And um, and so now, um, as this idea has kind of developed a bit more, and then the titles of the first and now the second album then spurred me on to the idea of, you know, this idea of uh, the Visions trilogy, which is where the first album was Reflections. That was very much reconnecting with the past and, you know, being able to um, step back and love and appreciate, you know, the music and the experience of, of the past and, you know, have a bit of a celebration of that. Distortions now, looking very much where we're at at the moment, taking that initial template, mixing it up, adding more sound and influence into that template and creating something that has got a lot more contrast, that's moved quite a bit more. And then the next phase, because I found this so inspiring, we'll be looking to the future for projections. Where can we go next? What can we bring in? What can we do in the future as well? So. It's it, trying to strike that good balance between appreciate the past, loving what we're doing now, but also having, you know, one eye in the future as well. Yeah, makes sense. So let me show the artwork for the album, which I haven't showed yet, which is pretty cool. Here's the artwork for Distortions. Uh, I like it because it's pretty... Uh, when you see this, uh, it, it kind of looks like uh, at first, before I listened to the music, I thought you were going to be like a black metal band. Uh, <laughs> so I was playing because of the artwork alone, like I could think like, oh, maybe this is like symphonic black metal. But no. Uh, what can you tell me about this artwork? Because it's it, it really looks like a horror movie uh, type of uh, thing. <laughs> it's uh, it's a great piece of um 3D created art by uh, you know the master Andy Green, 
who has been a very, very dear friend for uh, you know a, a good twenty years now at this this point, and um, his work's amazing. Um, you know, uh, the, the 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 opportunity um, to you know be friends and have been working in the past as well when he did um you know my dying bride artwork as well and um then he did the video for chasms the standalone single that we, that we did before the album was coming out and uh he was very keen to create you know, an image for for the new album and uh like the idea of you know taking the the idea of distortions where You've got someone on one hand is is kind of not quite quite at peace, but just is 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 in one phase of the kind of life, and looking back on that, and then there is also then um, you know an innermost kind of rage that's wanting to kind of tear out of it, and um, the work that he's done has it, got such an organic kind of feel to it as well, like. Um, in the chasms video as well so it hence manifesting itself as all this kind of you know branches he really likes the um kind of simile of um you know branches and growth much in the same way as uh, like vascular systems and you know the uh, temporal organicness of uh, you know the human being as well so uh it's an amazing piece. I think it's just... no. It, it really, it really is. It really looks cool and uh, like uh, amazing artwork. And you know, so artwork is very important, and the music mm. is important. But artwork, especially for metal music, is important. So, uh, the name of the band, God God's Rim. How, mm. What was the inspiration or story behind that name? So, uh, unfortunately, uh, the the simple kind of brief at the time of when the band started was, we need a name that has A, not been used before, and uh, B, the uh, domain name was available <laughs> as well. And uh, so, uh, at that point in time, the band was still just very much a collection of old friends who were just reconnecting with you know musical things that we'd done in the past as well so the actual band's name came from uh, Chaz who was the uh, you know guitarist who was with us on on the very first EP he uh, had suggested the name it's a bit of a portmanteau of um, basically uh, you know divine might with um, you know, thrim meaning thrim meaning like you know, kind of a you know a a, a, a majesty and you know a, a kind of a rage and using um, a uh, you know a rune uh, that uh, you know the thrim rune and so mm -hmm. mixed that up with the god so so god thrim it's it's like a divine majesty a divine might and um, but uh, yeah it was Chaz who came up with it and I was like. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's that's cool because you know it's not been done. But uh, as then time's gone on, then yeah, the pronunciation's a thing, and some people uh, you know mix it up with you know calling it God rhythm at times, and it's like God eh, rhythm. No, at least I didn't get that. So uh, no, if, um, if you're the God rhythm, you would be like a like a polka band. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> so. Oh so uh, you know, I've, I've you know, we, we live with it, but um, but I mean, the the real thing that yeah, I connect with so much is uh, the there's the the sigil design that was done by Chris Casket that um, has taken the you know kind of you know the the thrim runes and uh, you know the G and it made a a very cool piece and it's kind of like in the tradition of like you know the, the sepulture. Uh, S and things like that. I think it's cool where yeah, I almost, uh, you know, relate a lot more to you know, the sigil and that image. So, uh, you know, not that we're prints or anything and saying, you know, we're known as, <laughs> as a symbol now. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The name's, the name's fine, but, um, but yeah, people do trip up over it. Sometimes. Yeah. Well, if you think about it, 
in a few years from there, there has to come a time where all, all, almost all names have been used. So oh, it's yeah. gonna be tricky. It's gonna be tricky because sometimes you see like, like for example, Ghost had to change to Ghost AD because there's another band named Ghost, and and you know it's 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 a I, there's just so many names that uh, that that can happen. There has to come a time like what is the band name? So and then so many you know you could get an increasing trend of bands where they've like got a sentence for the name. You know, oh yeah, for, for instance, you know that is but, true. But yeah, but, no, the yeah. album's pretty cool, and and uh, it's it's a cool story about the 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 name. So before I I, I let you go, uh, you be you know obviously you're a doom metal band. Uh, for you, uh, which are your three favorite doom metal records of all time, and why? Wow, wow, wow! Gosh, <laughs> gosh, gosh! Um, well, um. Gosh, I, I should go right back to the very, very start that kind of set me on the path, which is when my dad gave me a vinyl copy of Paranoid by Black Sabbath. And um, God, on there, you know, you've got Hand of Doom, Electric Funeral, and this was just like, wow. Yeah, they basically just... created Doom and Heavy Metal. Oh, completely, completely, completely. And then, um, then you know, later on, um, there was uh, a, a a new band from Halifax where the drummer lived over the road from me as as well, and uh, we'd we'd gone to the same school as well, and uh, he was in a band called uh, Paradise Lost, and oh. uh, <laughs> so uh, so then. Yeah, I was friends with those guys very, very early doors. And um, then, you know, the demo is amazing. Um, you know, Lost Paradise, amazing. But Gothic, oh, that is just when, like, Greg McIntosh kind of hit the stride of these melodic, mournful leads over, you know, these, these, these doomy riffing. And um, that's just, like... Wow, this is just yeah, that, that that's really, really, really changed everything. And um, and then for a third, do I, I mean do, do I go Nightfall by Candlemas or uh, do I even go uh, uh, Obedience Through Suffering Crowbar, which I think is is just like an absolute and just down a you know miserable doom and heavy riffing stuff, or where do I go? Um, I don't know. Actually, I'm, I'm going to go uh, a lot more more recent uh, then because with um, a band who absolutely helped rekindle my, you know, absolute love and passion for this music, and that will be um, Paul Bearer. And uh, oh, with, great uh, band! Oh, completely. And uh, and and their first album was just absolutely. Uh, I was amazing. We just blown away when when I was in Valenfire and we did the Decibel tour. That was with um, Paul Bearer and uh, also Converge and uh, at the gates and Paul Bearer just blew me away so much. And then ended up guesting with them a couple of times over there. Become such close friends and yeah, they're very much responsible for just really getting me back into you know, the love of this whole scene once again. So yeah, so I'll go, I'll, I'll go with uh, yeah Paul Bearer. First. Yeah, and they're bringing American Doom to the yeah. because they're not, you know, obviously Doom was created in in Brit in British uh, Britain, but uh, yeah, those are other type of Doom. But yeah, I love Paul Bear. So everyone, uh, God Rhythm, uh, God Rhythm, <laughs> these portions is coming <laughs> out on August the eighteenth. Yes, it's it's hard to say the names of that. I'm like, oh. yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna put the link for everyone who wants to pre-order the record. Buy the vinyl, uh, buy the CD, or or even are you putting it out on cassette too? Because that's a new I thing. I don't now. know about a cassette as yet. Oh, uh, but um, oh, sorry, just one sec. Oh. If you have the vinyl, we can look at it. <laughs> because yeah, uh, I always enjoy looking at those. Uh,
So Hamish got, got the, I, I, he went to get the vinyl. So let's see the vinyl. So yeah, the artwork looks amazing. And uh, it's you know, full size. I was so much more blown away with uh, the artwork with seeing it like this. And then, you know, as a full kind oh, of yeah. gatefold and, you know, all, uh, hey, looking, looking. Oh, and you're on a couch. Looking pretty. <laughs> On a couch, chilling <laughs> on the couch. <laughs> Let me see that picture again. Were you trying to do like a cranberries picture? That oh. looks just like the that oh. looks like the cranberries. No need to argue, photo. Oh no, you're exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, I love the cranberries. But <laughs> they're not doom metal, but yeah, it it looks like like you had the, you're like, hey, let me take that cranberries picture of us uh, sitting on because you're quite it really. Right. It almost looks like the like I well I think their first two albums they were the first two albums they were both albums were they're sitting on a couch, which I thought it was interesting that the first album covers they were always sitting on a couch. But, yeah, yeah. I, I, I do remember that, and then yeah. but yeah, I mean, and then the rest of it we we just you know we're just going around the house basically. So nice. <laughs> you know, but... what are the color variants that you have for the album? Uh, so I know that um, Decibel magazine have got an exclusive, like um, I think it's like a gold and silver on blue splatter. Uh, I know there's another like kind of blue and gold, uh, like kind of almost like sunburst version as well. And then uh, the uh, regular you know, black vinyl as well. So, uh, so nice. yeah, I've seen three variations so far. Yeah, they 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 do a lot of that. That were they like the exclusive variant that you need to get. And you know, there's people that are like super fans that get like all the variants, uh, which is you know when I the, when I think of those people, I think like, do they pay rent or something? Like, <laughs> if they buy like five different variants, they're like spending like three hundred bucks or more on vinyl yeah. alone. Absolutely. But then, you know, people, uh, you know, we've got the passions, uh, you know, I've, I've probably spent far too much money over the years on uh, you know, guitars, amps and things, which the same way, you know, someone else, it might, their passion could be, you know, kind of cars or, or football or something. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know. People you spend know. money on what they love. I, um, I salute and uh, appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, so... So Hamish, uh, it was it's been great chatting with you. Uh, nice. You know, for a band that has that name, like you're like, you're like a real like teddy bear and sweet guy. Like people, uh, you know that people are afraid of like oh metal people. They're like oh they're like all pissed and nothing. No, we're not. You know, <laughs> uh, we're, we're not. no, exactly. You know the uh, you know the frustrations and uh, you know the the, the hard as yes, we can see at times. You know we're we're lucky that we've got. It's a, a vessel that we can channel this through and that's you know music and and it can be you know the darker sides of music and it can be a good cathartic release so um, hopefully then we can spend the rest of the time being quite well adjusted for the rest of the time yeah so people on uh pre-order the album coming out august the 18th uh let's show the artwork one more time so people can <laughs> view it uh august 18 get it it looks awesome. So I'll post the link for people for the pre-order. So until next time, people, this is Hector, the shield dude on a couch, and I'll see you all right here on the couch. Thank you and good night.